Welcome to Depictions Media Radio. everyone uh, welcome back uh, to community living radio and well if you're here in vancouver i guess you you're experiencing a bunch of rain right now it's pretty wet out there um so which is hey that's one of the joys of living I- here in this particular city uh the rain liquid sunshine as i like to say so because we can't let anything else Take our happiness away from them. We we have to keep on top of that and keep it deep inside of us, right? So, um, today's guest is Jen Tracy, or I should say Jen D. Tracy. Uh, Jen D. Tracy is a uh, strategic strategic alchemist, a published author, and one of Canada's uh, top marketing experts. I think she even worked with uh, a superstar um, musician. Um, we'll ask her about that in a bit. Um, Jen specializes in customer engagement and customer retention. I got some really good questions for her about the, about that sort of thing too. Um, Jen is also a founder of Lift Strategies, a company that helps business owners put effective systems in place that so that their business has the best tools to succeed her proven five steps as strategic sales and marketing process um she's trademarked it very good uh Um, it's called the lift process has helped thousands of businesses in boosting their uh, bottom line okay some of the things that that are in here um, Jen does have a hidden disability um, uh, uh, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and she is this successful that is amazing Um, that, that, that she is able to do all these sort of things so a warm welcome. Jane, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> so, um, that, is, that is amazing stuff. Totally amazing stuff. Um, it's kind of kind of interesting that you, you uh, talk about customer engagement. Um, in, some, in some ways, um, I help people set up things like different thank you cards and things like that they go out to go back out to their customers as consultants that make people feel really warm and welcome and yes that's so important yeah we all want to we all want that don't we we all want to feel mm-hmm. we all want to receive warm and welcome in our lives yeah Oh, it looks like I already. Jen, Jen sent me a list of questions that to, to keep me on track because everyone knows and listens to Shaw get off track and just go on a tangent. <laughs> and I think we already answered question one, didn't we? Well, sort of, sort of. <laughs> actually, I just like to comment on that just a little bit more. Um, yes, actually, I have two invisible. Uh, disabilities and one is dyslexia and the other one is fatigue yeah yeah oh so it wasn't fibromyalgia then uh, well I live with MS yes multiple oh, MS. sclerosis oh, yeah. Okay. yeah yeah but you know they're all kind of gangled together in some way shape or form that's for sure because mm-hmm. um, c- well correct me if I'm wrong but like most of the the neuro um, uh, dis- disabilities like fibromyalgia, uh, MS, and 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 alike, they um they usually there's a chronic fatigue that, that comes along with it because your body doesn't turn off correctly. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I you know I I saw an incredible movie called Unrest, which is about uh, fibromyalgia and really explains it well. Which is when you get to a certain point, you hit a a wall, and if you don't stop and rest 
then you your body kind of can collapse. Um, I don't know if that's the case for everybody. Um, with dyslexia, I think, I don't know if it's that extreme. I'm very fortunate in that um, even though, uh, you know, I live with fatigue every day, uh, I'm still able to do many things as long as I structure my day in a way that I can manage my energy. And, and you and I had a good chat about energy management when we talked last, and I think um, that, you know, that is really the key. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, um, okay, all, all the success and everything, they do, all those things that you ta- we talked about with the customer retention and the... Um, and customer satisfaction and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, you have dyslexia, which means you have trouble reading. <laughs> Is that correct? Yeah, you know, and yes, well, you know, it's a, it's a combination of things. It's just like when I try and dial a uh, phone number, sometimes I have to dial three times because I mess it up. I might transpose numbers and letters, and I'm a slow reader, Um However, I would say on the spectrum of dyslexia, I'm probably a 3 out of 10 in terms of extreme. So I'm on the lower end, but mm-hmm. yeah, it still impacts me in terms of I can't see my errors necessarily when I'm typing an email, for example. So, you know, those little things that uh, are hard to pick up in yeah. life or are slightly annoying, right? It, it has made me a much better oral communicator, you know, and, and a better listener because I have been really dependent on on my listening skills and on my communication skills in order to offset, um, you know, the reading end of things in which as a kid I would never read aloud. I just felt so much, you know, embarrassment about it, right? Yeah, I, t- I kind of get along with that one because... Um, they, they even went as far as me in school because they hadn't quite di- got around to diagnosing dyslexia. They said, well, you know, um, Mrs. Michael, you know that uh, that, that Michael's never going to succeed but, but so far. He's always going to have to be some kind of a laborer or something like that because, well, his reading skills just aren't good enough to really hold a decent job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I think the expectations for me were not very high either and, you know, by certain people in my life. (laughs) And it's really interesting because I, you know, if I hadn't been told I had dyslexia, uh, I would have never been operating in that sort of uh, realm, right? I had to to do uh, repeat grade 7 not really by choice. As an adult, I can see the benefit of, of having done that. At the time, though, you know, that caused a lot of shame. And, and truthfully, it took me till like, I was 46 or 7 to realize I'm a pretty smart person, you know? So sometimes those things can come later in life. It's, it's interesting. But I've always been very driven and motivated. So I think that has been really one of the, you know, the secrets to, to my success. Um, and also knowing what my weaknesses were. Um, well, when I worked in jobs for the first 10 years, it was disastrous. And then I started working at uh, a record label, which we can talk about a bit later. And there I came up with strategies to get certain people to prove my work and do all the stuff that I couldn't do myself very well. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that was when I discovered my potential which was like, you know, a very exciting turning point in my life in my mid-twenties. Right. Um, Now, you mentioned mentioned strategies and you're a strategist uh, for for businesses. (laughs) Um, So, how did those strategies, I mean, there's a little bit of it, but uh, what are some of the strategies that were really helpful for for you? yeah. In, 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 in succeeding, the, I mean, you're, you're I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to label you extremely successful, um, and our listeners will figure out why you're extremely successful uh, as the show progresses. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll tease them that way. Yeah, Sounds yeah. good. A little bit of teasing going yeah. on. Keep them listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, you know, I think that um, I had to, first of all, figure out what kind of jobs were not good for me to be doing because in those jobs I was, uh, you know, told I was not focused or different criticisms when really I was just uh, too embarrassed and had too much shame about saying, hey, 
I, I've got this little thing called dyslexia and uh, it impacts me. So that was, you know, confusing for people. So when I went into the music business and I, I, I started to sort of come out about that and say, listen, I do have some spelling challenges and stuff. And, and that wasn't an impediment for them. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's the first green light, you know. And for me, I think it was really about uh, building up my confidence. That's such a huge piece and working at this record label gave me an opportunity to really kind of freestyle and do things um, independently not in a, in a sort of in a box and I start to see successes which we can talk about a little bit later and when I start to see those successes I thought wow like I when I'm given I when I'm given a little bit of space around my work I don't think I've ever been like a great employee per se in some ways but I'm given space around my work um, in a job or now in my own business which I've been doing for over 18 years now then that's when I have the you know, can succeed because I can pay other people in my business to do things that I'm not good at. And I can focus in on what I'm really good at and and then, you know, it's more fun and enjoyable and and people get to benefit from the parts that I'm I'm good at as opposed to the stuff that I may struggle a little bit with. So I have the, I set up my life that way, but it took me, honestly, it took me a long time to get to that place. I, I, I didn't imagine I'd have my own business and, um, and then, you know, I got laid off during the dot com bomb and then it's like, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the 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 dot com bomb that was a that was a um, a really it got a lot of people, right? Yeah, especially and, you know, entrepreneurs. It was a gift for me because it put me into that place of going into researching what I want to do next, and I was I fell into one of those self employment programs that are funded in Canada, and I had a cheerleader behind me, this woman that was just cheerleading me all the way, and you know I thought well if it doesn't work out my business I, I'll, as soon as the EI ends or if I can't get it off and going I'll just go back to another job and I never have ever since 18 years later so uh, yeah I must have done something right <laughs> yeah I would say you, you've, you've done done a few a few things right um, yeah so you know with with with, with all that success and everything, of course, sometimes success leads to more work and things like that. Um, has that fatigue ever I I impacted your success? Yes, you know, the fatigue came in a sense, it probably was ramping up, um, but it came suddenly when I was, I was actually on a, a speaking tour in northern BC, um, I was hired by First Nations Radio up there to speak to their business owners, uh, to people that were their customers that paid for advertising on the radio or prospective business owners. And I did a three-day tour. And during that time, I noticed that my uh, energy was really low. And I was like, wow, this is so weird. And I... I, got, I said, oh, i got to go out for a run, and I went out for a run, and my foot was dragging behind me, and then I noticed my hand wasn't working very well. These are both on my left-hand side, so you can imagine I'm, I'm starting to fall apart, and by the time I came back to Vancouver, my left lip had drooped, and uh, within about uh, 72 hours of that, I was, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and, um, you know, so... When that happened, even though I had fatigue, I just thought, oh, well, it will pass, you know, it's going to pass, I'm not going to have to deal with it anymore, they they loaded me up with three days of drip steroids, I was a maniac like the Incredible Hulk <laughs> for a while, just crazy, like a crazy woman, but, you know, then I realized, oh, wait a sec here, this fatigue isn't going away, and so I think... What I realized at that time, it, and honestly, it, you know, the, the grief of the diagnosis took, took some time to shake it through. But when I realized, okay, this is, this is something that's going to be part of my life. And uh, then I just, 
I just did workarounds. I thought, okay, well, first of all, I'm going to pare down on my work because I was working like 12-hour days, you know, I was being a maniac and having so much fun and I was at the peak of my career at, at uh, you know, at 44. I was, I was making the most money I'd ever made and I was doing what I wanted to do and it was like, wow, and then this kind of happened and it was like, oh, <laughs> and um so I just started. Uh, I just started basically napping in the afternoon, and it's like you know, I felt guilty about it at first, and then I thought, no, I create my own schedule. I'm the boss. No one needs to know where I am or what I'm doing right now. I could be in a meeting with a client for anyone knows, and that is the gift. The gift was that because I had my own business, I was able to. Uh, start to, to set things up in a way that was manageable for me and uh, I have to say that my fatigue sort of improved a bit over time and then you know as I've aged it's gotten a little bit uh, worse so it kind of variates but I'm in a system now and I, I you know I, I make sure that I have breaks and rest and that has been pivotal to my ability to continue on with my business and and my life and certainly it means that I a chunk of my day is shorter because I can't I don't work as much because I'm resting however um, I get to still work and that is uh, I, I'm so grateful to have that in my life. I, I can't, I, you know, I'm a person where I think that I could have a hundred times uh, gone on disability and um, and I would have qualified and I just, I've said no because emotionally that would have crumbled me and so I choose, I choose to be, live with fatigue and uh, embrace my work fully and completely. Wow. Um, you're making yourself sound like even more of a hero than, than when I first described. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Uh, so, you know, you say you you say that you 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 built uh, systems and things like that um, <laughs> to, to to help your day move, move along. Um, what are some of those uh, s systems? Um, look oh, that like? I put in place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I I think, you know, for me, what's really important is, and this is something I learned actually from Brendan Bouchard, but I was putting in place before, and he's kind of a high-performance guy who's popular among certain people, um, is to, to take back my morning. So that usually means stretching, uh, which uh, for people that, live with MS, they might be able to relate or other things that you can get a bit more stiff and that plus, you know, just getting older, right? <laughs> so stretching is something that I, I consistently incorporate into my morning uh, unless I have a really, really early morning uh, session and then it's very difficult for me to get up in time to do that. And I do sit on a cushion and meditate ideally three to five times a week and I find that that is um, is very useful to me in terms of just stopping you know stopping because I'm a person that likes to move I'm a busy person I, I, I don't really like to sit still and so that's a time to just plant myself in one place and just be still and sometimes I'll have these huge uh, ideas or thoughts, not that that's really a part of meditation, but I will have aha moments that will come to me that will be transformational around, a lot of it's around work because I'm a planner, um, but it's just really uh, a nice thing to do, to light a candle and to sit on a cushion and I pull these little angel cords, cards afterwards today, Michael, I pulled openness and willingness before before this interview today and so I'm I'm you know setting myself up for that today wow. yeah wow. well uh, I, I I hope that um, the that the angels bring you bring you all that you're, you're, you're supposed to have today with you being open that's for sure yeah um, um, it, yeah, I, I I believe in a lot of the the woo woo. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, we we got some alignment happening here, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's so many things that that have um have that have happened in in my life 
that um, I can't. Ex- I just can't simply a- explain it away. And I'm a very science-based kind of a person, also. So it's like when you can't expl- explain. There's no other explanation. It's like okay, fine. You know, we'll go to the woo-woo on this one. <laughs> Yeah, check mark beside the woo-woo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's nothing really too wrong with that. Um, so, yeah, meditation is a really strong part of my life, and um, and it helps. It really helps you get through the day, right? Yes, so. it can be a good, good foundational piece, and that, along with, to me, eating well and eating really healthy foods. Uh, for me personally, I do uh, stay away from gluten-free um, for, for a number of reasons. And also that taking rests, you know, just laying down and getting horizontal. It's amazing how that can, even for 10 or 15 minutes, can be very restorative. Sometimes it will be two hours for me and I'll actually fall asleep. So um, that is is the one thing consistently that is built into to my day is the, is the rest, even over yeah. the stretching and the uh, meditation, because otherwise I'm just a grumpy bear later in the day, and and I I choose not to be right <laughs> by so having the rest. Let me let me get to a couple of messages here on on a break, and we'll yes. be right back with you. Hold on. Thank you. Welcome to Depictions Media. Radio. Diane Hume has a personal goal to help 1 million people find their dreams in abundance and fulfillment. I just attended Diane Hume's bootcamp, uh, Live Your Life Now. And what I can say, for one day, it's some kind of transformational experience all of us got. It's shifting our mind, and it's it's awesome. I won't tell you too much because you have to experience that. And it's about dreams, about relationships with yourself, about affirmations, and about going to the next level. Come to the Dream Receivers Boot Camp and realize your dreams. Type in dianehume.net right now. Have a show idea? Contact us at Depictions Media. Email your show idea to Michael at depictionsmedia.com today. listening to Community Living Radio, and I am Michael, and we're broadcasting live from CFRO 100.5 FM in Vancouver, and we're talking to uh, Din De- J- Jen De Tracy. oh, getting tongue-tied now, that's a, that's a new one, um, and we're talking to her about um, her strategies for, uh, for success and even living with um, with fatigue and MS, dyslexia, um, she uses these systems to actually uh, bo- bo- boost her success and and help her get through her day. Now, Jen, you, when we went to the break, you were talking about nutrition. Yes, I was. Yes. Now, I I'd like to say that. Um, um, uh, there's a there's a quote uh, from another friend of mine. You can't exercise away a bad diet. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's very true, uh, isn't it? <laughs> I would I would agree with that. Yes. And, yeah. And what are your you know what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are um, I'm very careful about what it is I do eat. I know you know it's not saying that you can't have the the occasional um, cookie or something like that, but it, I'm very careful about how that cookie was made, you know, um, and avoiding avoiding things like uh, white sugar in and uh, and things that are really over processed. So yeah, that's good. 
I, um, in my journey, I remember when I first early on was diagnosed and I was introduced uh, from somebody to a woman who had a big TED talk, Terry Walls, who has the wall protocol around diet and, and being able to transform from her, uh, her experience of living with MS. And I, I just, I couldn't embrace that eight years ago I was too overwhelmed and actually I just like to celebrate uh, I have almost completed seven days on the wall protocol level three which is the most strict and uh, strict uh, diet um, with the hope of um, increasing my energy levels but I do have to say that uh, I've tried many things over the last eight years and right now I'm in a place where um, my expectations on that are low. I just really want to see how that can change my life. And one of the, the things about going through that process is getting into a state of teco- um, it's called uh, ketosis, where your system is uh, where the way that you digest the food and get the nutrients passes through the blood barrier and goes to the brain. Mm-hmm. And so yesterday I peed on a little strip and I was in ketosis last night for the first time. So that was like really um, exciting and, and um, led me to to realize, wow, like I, now I'm really motivated to, to uh, you know, my commitment to the diet initially is two months, but now I'm really motivated <laughs> because I've just had my first little success right and it's amazing how we in life can do something that we want and it's so easy to quit but when we have that taste of success that feeling the experience of success how that can really keep us going whether we have a disability or not and i i find that to be just so uh such a great reminder to me um, as using that as a tool to keep going. Now, sometimes that success might not happen for a long time, right? Look at people that write books and take it to 30, 40 publishers before, you know, they get a deal. Um, tenacity is part of success, right? Yeah, it, it, it definitely it definitely is a part of success. One of my... Uh, um, one of my he- heroes in life... Um, People were surprised to find out how long of a process it took Rocky to actually come out. It's like, and did he he um, he wind up uh, selling his dog and everything else, but but he stuck with it. He just kept going, right? Yes, so. that's a fantastic story. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so Sylvester Stallone, when you when when you talk about examples of, of uh, tenacity, um, he's it. You know how he he just stuck with everything and kept going. So yes, he was determined to reach his dream of that, of not only writing a movie but acting in that movie. Yes, yes. I, I I figured you would know this story because um, because you you've you spent time in the entertainment industry and anybody who spent any time in the entertainment industry they know that story. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's a very powerful story, and actually, I I found out about it more recently, and I was I was like, wow, you know, that is tenacity. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so. Tenacity, of course, it, it 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 combines a bunch of things. At least in my in my mind, like focus and resilience and determination, it it is combined into into tenacity, right? So yes. how does that help you? Well, I think that I've always been really uh, a focused person. I remember. Um, a friend of mine was outside my house and they were coming up the stairs to, or they were just about to come up the stairs and they were just staring in the window watching me work and they were waiting for me to look up and I was just so focused, <laughs> I never looked out the window <laughs> during, and then finally they're like, okay, I gotta ring the doorbell. Um, you know, it's just, I think in order to, in order to really be able to succeed with a disability and um you know dyslexia i think i just automatically learned how to focus 
mm-hmm. and um, that has been very powerful for me. And uh, resilience has been something that I never really would have used that word in the past. But certainly, if you own a business, there's going to be ebbs and flows. I mean, it's rare that any business won't have some kind of ebb and flow in it, even if that ebb is small <laughs> compared to the flow. And I think as a person that has these invisible disabilities that I realize, wow, you know, I have really built up a lot of resilience. And it's amazing how once we become resilient at one thing or in one area, how we don't lose that. We just in- keep increasing our resilience. Right. You know, um, that, that actually, the, that story the, you told has been said about me that when I when I actually start getting in, especially if I'm editing, you, you, they're like, you just kind of disappeared. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're in your zone, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I just think that's like, that's the, the, the flow that we get into as human beings when we're doing something that we are passionate about or just really fully engaged in, like fully fully being present and that's where that focus comes and and I I can't remember what the time frame is but they say that if you're working on something whether it's in a job or a project personal project or in your own business is that once you step away from that focus it can take you something like 10 or 20 minutes to get back into the flow again and that's why uh, multitasking is not recommended yeah um in some in some respects, um, multitasking is kind of overrated, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tempta- I see multitasking kind of, and I, again, I'm I'm speaking from my own experience of my own generation as a 52 year old woman, but I think that um, for me, it's multitasking is an excuse to not get something done. It's like procrastination, right? People will, and uh, you know, I'm studying coaching right now. And people will, um, will not. They'll they'll be stuck moving forward with something because they don't get started on it because they're multitasking on other things. And I think that uh, how you can get focused is to just take that first step on whatever it is that you want to do. And you know, usually when you're in it, um, that's great. And one of my strategies. Michael is that I would start I used to and I still to some degree do do this but in the beginning of my business I came up with the idea that I would use I'm, I used to be a morning person before before MS and I would um, when I got up I would put my attention towards some, one of the most difficult things in my day and I would get those things done first when my energy was high and my um, enthusiasm was also high and so that might be um, you know uh, writing blogs for the book that I've published or or making difficult sales calls that I'm not looking forward to or, you know or something that requires like a huge amount of brain power so that was a strategy that I I used to use there's now I work uh, my flow in my work day is a little bit different because sometimes I'll work I'll work after I do my morning practice then I'll have a nap a lunch and a nap and then I might work a bit more and I might even work in the evening um, I don't work as as much as I used to, but that flow is a little bit different now than it right. would have been back then. So we right. do change, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we do change. Um, well, if we didn't did change, something else would happen to us, and we won't we won't talk about that. <laughs> Not today, right? Yeah, that's another that's topic a, that's for a, another, another day. Yeah, that's another topic. Um, so, um, so I I I I. I I've been told that oh well you need to learn to multitask a little bit and it's like and I'm like I'd rather just focus on one thing at a time get it done and get it done well than try to do a little bit of this this, a little bit of that and then everything seemed to suffer it had a little suffer to it right (laughs) yeah yeah then you're just not really you're not in it fully and so it's hard to know if that's the best that it could be right Right, and there is that balance I think Michael too like you know if we talk about the best it can be is 
uh, that's a whole another thread too because some people that are in business are always waiting for things to be perfect and they don't have a lot of forward motion and, and nothing will ever be perfect but we can focus and get the job done and be 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 present with what we're doing so that we know that it's going to be um, it's going to be the best it can be in that in that moment right well it, the, it I, and sometimes that that's it. that's hard to accept that it's not perfect, right? It's hard to accept that it's not perfect. That it's not perfect, but but uh, but um, but you know, sometimes even the not perfect can, can be brilliant, right? That's, well, it, that's there's an acceptance right. of there, right? That okay, yeah, well, I I missed that detail, so it's not perfect. How do you deal with that acceptance? That How is do not I deal absolutely with it? Perfect, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because I think um, when I was told at five years old or six years old that I had dyslexia, I was like, uh, yeah, whatever, you know? Uh, but then I was terrified to read in public. And I think that I learned at an early age, uh, based on labels that had been placed on me, that I was not perfect. So I think in some ways I have given myself permission uh, from an early age onward to not be perfect, to be imperfectly perfect, you might say. And so I give myself license for that. Uh, it doesn't mean that I, I'm not a striver and um, that in that way, but I think as a business owner, if I were to wait till I had a perfect script before making a cold call, you know, that would, I could be waiting a long time for that. And yes, I can make a fool of myself on the phone. There's no question about it. And oh, at the same I've done time, that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, when I was working for the record label, Sarah McLaughlin's record label, Network Records, out in Vancouver, Uh-oh, in my the cat's out of the bag now. You, you, I you know. I, name, I, right? I just I had to spill it. You know, <laughs> I had to spill it out. Uh, I was making phone calls for one half of the day, which I did not really like doing, and it was hard work. But truth is that that experience I had connecting with people, building relationships without having a visual of people, cold calling, convincing people to bring in uh, records, records or CDs from a band that they, you know, totally industrial band like Skinny Puppy or a band that no one's ever heard of like Itch or Mystery Machine or Rose Chronicles. Um, you know, I was, I was selling all the time. I was relationship selling and that really helped me when I started my own business because even though I don't go, yay, I get to make cold calls today, I do have the I don't confidence. think anybody does that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though, once I'm in it, because I, I, I am a, I like people, right? I like people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love people. So, so for me, having those meaningful conversations um, are really important. And, you know, at Network Records, I got to, in the afternoon, I talked to the fans. I read their letters. I would have conversations with them. I would get to see how fanatical they were. And that was being on the other side, right? The other side of the experience of being on the phone. And that was really, for me, a pivotal moment, too. That sort of transformed my perspective about marketing and really gave me insights into uh, human people dynamics around, uh, not obsession, some people are obsessed, but that how people will uh, give themselves over to uh, music is so powerful to idolizing um, someone. It could be a hockey player. In this case, for me, it was music, uh, musicians. And I really built my entire business around uh, certain philosophies that I learned um, from my days in the music business in my 20s. So uh, I know I'm kind of taking you on a wandering here but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's yes. all okay I, I think I think you're still still kind of on point though yeah so so I think that um, 
In this day and age, when we live in the digital media, where people are just using emails to reach out to people and waiting for people to call them, get back to them, and I've heard people complain and go, well, I emailed that person and I didn't hear back, and I'm thinking, well, you know, it's your agenda that you want to hear back from them, so it's your responsibility as a business owner or whoever you are to be the person to to follow up, particularly in business, actually, because, you know, uh, I always describe it this way, is uh, when when the person I want to reach on the phone to have that conversation with about marketing or sales or my online programs or my book or whatever that is, um, when they're getting up in the morning, they're not thinking, oh, I want to talk to Jen to Tracy today. They're thinking, that while they brush their teeth, they're thinking about all the 10,000 things they have to do in the day. And as a, as a business owner, I think we need to put ourselves into the shoes of the people that we, we uh, have and the people we want as our customers and, and, and think about uh, what their priorities are so that when we don't get an email back right away or they don't return our message, that you know, we can have compassion, understanding that it's our agenda, not theirs. That that is a very important point. Um, I'm going to say this, and then, then we got to get to a break. Um, when I send somebody an email, I actually call and leave them a phone message. Hey, I just sent you an email uh, about whatever it is it's about, and. Um, if you want to get back to me right away and let me know that you at least found the email, then they then they can call me back. But I, I leave it out there that way they they because a lot of times people just never found the email, and that's what yes. the major problem is. <laughs> it's like you yeah, can't tell people they sent it. <laughs> it's great. It's a great way to do things, and and I guess we're kind of like minded in that way, and that as marketers we understand that different people respond to different ways of communication and a double communication is always better than a single yes yes um so with that we're, we're going to jump to a break and we'll be right back with uh jen de tracy hold on welcome to depictions media radio you are looking for success with your business and products Go with the best, the professional voice, Earl Thomas The Voice. I will create more money, clients, and success for you. Over 70 businesses chose my voice to advance their business, products, and profits. Look on my LinkedIn profile for 27 recommendations from satisfied clients. I look forward to hearing from you at dukeearl at shaw.ca. That's D. U K E E A R L at Shaw.ca. I am Earl Thomas the Voice, creating vocal paradise for your exact needs. Have a show idea? Contact us at Depictions Media. Email your show idea to michael at depictionsmedia.com today. Okay, and we're back. You're listening to Community Living Radio. Um, and we're broadcasting live from CFRO 100.5 FM here in Vancouver. Uh, I'm Michael, and we're speaking with Din. One day, I'm not going to get tongue tied. <laughs> Jen De Tracy. It's the two. The 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 J. Jen and yes, it, and the. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, a lot of people call me Tracy. It happens because of the Jen De Tracy thing. So yeah. I, <laughs> I'm called many things. So okay, since this is our last segment, um, you have um, steps for people. Um, it and 
some of the, some of the, the folks that do actually listen to this show, they they may have a disability, but they're also trying to supplement their disability check with a business, like maybe an artistic business or something else where they provide a service to somebody, and they work as much as they can in order to satisfy that that customer. Um, and you have some proven steps for a marketing process. So should yes. we go through those? Yes, that sounds fantastic. So there's five steps in the process. We'll just start with the first one and break it down really easily. And I mm -hmm. just want to say for people that are uh, either start, want to start something or or um, already have some kind of product or service, even if they're doing that like five hours a week, these principles apply. And there are things that you can consider in terms of making making this process of marketing easier for you, more focused, and just, you know, knowledge is, is empowerment. So the first step is called layer. And I, I like to compare that to... Um, you can compare that to a, a great Mexican bean dip recipe, you know, where you start off with the first layer, which is the beans, and then you put the guac, and then, you know, a juicy ripe tomato, dice it up and put it on top. That's layer number three, and the sour cream, and then the, you know, the, the fromage, the cheese, right? Mm -hmm. and, and if you think about it, um, yeah, you know, as a standalone eating those refried beans, they might be okay, but it's the combination of all those ingredients together that makes that recipe taste so good. Uh, and the same is true of marketing. If you just have one thing that you are doing marketing-wise, let's take, for example, Facebook, and that's all you're doing, it, you know, it can take a long time to get traction. And that's only one layer. So it's important to have more than one layer in your marketing. So, I mean, and, and, and I just want to say about this, because I was thinking about this the other day before our interview, Michael, was, you know, when I think about Facebook now, it's very multi purposed right because you've got now you've got the Facebook live and now you've got the tell the story which goes to people's direct message and then you've got you know the regular news, news feed post and you know so in a way I would say that if someone was doing all of those things and I know uh, a woman who's got a very successful multi-level marketing business that is she can use that she has successfully used Facebook as a way to leverage uh, success in her business. But she's also going out and networking, going to networking groups and meeting people. It's very hard in a business to live in a silo unless you have tons of time or tons of money because, you know, uh, you're either going to have to do everything organically if you've got an online store um, or you're going to have to pay for ads or a combination of both. So when you think about wanting to sell your product, service, um, you know, you want to think about, okay, what's maybe, what what's one marketing layer that I can do and start to do really, really well? And once I've got that going, what, what other layer can I stack on there? And slowly you can stack layers. The biggest problem, Michael, is that people, what happens is, uh, you know, we talk about focus earlier. They, they, if they multitask and they have too many layers to promote whatever they're selling, um, often it doesn't get done well, and nothing works. And that can be a challenge. That could be a um, a big challenge. Um, that um, that uh, I see. I see a lot of people struggle with that, right? Yeah. So if they fo if if I recommend to the listeners that that either want to get started in this or are is is that you know, make sure that whatever you're doing you're doing it really well and if there's other layers or marketing initiatives that you're not doing well like maybe you're not doing regular email follow ups or you're not picking up the phone regularly or whatever that is. Um, Pick one thing that you want to improve and focus on that first. And then as you get that up and running and that's going well, add another layer to it. And over time, it will build and you will get momentum. I kind of look at it as, uh, you know, conceiving a, a baby. So basically, you know, that little sperm has to go into the egg. And from there, there's usually nine months of, uh, you know, 
conception time and that's the reality is when you're building a business you're looking at you know nine to twelve months to, to sometimes even before you see some traction so patience mm-hmm. is important in that process yeah patience is very important Wait, that leads, leads back to our points about uh, tenacity also um, that's right yeah. <laughs> um, so what was step number two be yeah, step number two is inform, which is is understanding what your core message is. And you can't really understand that core message until you understand who are your ideal fans. And this goes back to the music business. When I saw those fanatic fans, if you ever see, for example, a picture, this is going back in time, to the Beatles and you or a clip of them and you see how crazy their fans are, you know, um, you want to, in your own business, make sure, and sometimes this can take time, you won't know it necessarily right away, to find the people that really appreciate your product or your, your art or your service. And those are the people that are your fans. And once you get to know who they are, then you can really design and write um, compelling messages through social media, on a website, and so on and so forth that really speak to those people. And that is the key of inform. So that's step two is understanding who your ideal fans are so that you can, uh, you know, basically customize your message to them as opposed to, you know, I hear all the time, oh, everybody's my client or everybody's my customer. And then, you know, once they start working with me, they're like, oh, no, they're not. (laughs) Because <laughs> we don't have ten million dollars marketing budget to have everybody as our customer, you know. Yeah, we're yeah. like the micro business people. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, I I have a saying where when I when I because we actually uh, do do ads on our own ads or advertising on our podcast version of this, which can be found on Spreaker and on iHeart. Um, that. Um, I, I have to get people to narrow down. If you market to everybody, you're marketing to no one. Is what Good I tell point. them. Good <laughs> yes. like, point. Yeah. That's a, yeah, so. that's a great way to express it. So, shall I carry on with step number three? Yes, step number three. Let's see what that looks step like. Step number three. Okay, step number three is frequency. Now, frequency has changed over the years because it used to be that you could just send out an email, you know, newsletter four times a year and that was good, you know, and now in the days of social media, if you're doing uh, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, you know, that can be, some people can be tweeting, posting up to, uh, you know, anywhere from once a day to 10 times a day. And so frequency has changed, but the key is to go back to your layers and look at how frequently are you doing certain things? Like how frequently are you, if you're going to do social media, how frequently are you posting on the platform that really speaks to your ideal fans? And if you're not doing it enough, then you need to go back and look at, should I ramp this up, right? Or newsletters, if you're doing, uh, um, for example, onboarding as people come on board to a, a website and they sign up for your newsletter, you know, to what frequency are you building that relationship with them? And these are things to consider that people actually have the capacity to handle more frequency than we realize. Now, obviously, you know, you don't want to be sending someone an email uh, 10 times a day, um, but having an email go out once a week or having a series of three emails go out to welcome a person and and connect with them and and, uh, make them feel like they made a good choice to purchase something on your website or to come to your art gallery or to have a conversation with you, then that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- so, what would s- step number four be? Uh, step number it? four? Okay, this one is, I mean, all these steps are important, but this one is vital. And that is that 75% or more of money gets left on the table uh, due to lack of follow up. So, if you're going to start something, uh, like maybe you've talked to someone about your art and they've expressed an interest, um, but then they don't get back to you, is your job, as I was talking about earlier, to follow up with them and, and build that relationship. You know, we talk about um, dating, you know, you don't go from a coffee date to marriage. <laughs> you don't go from, from <laughs> one conversation to a sale. So it's really important to have follow-up 
strategies in place and you know to, ca- to put that in your calendar or have a, a, a customer relationship management system or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever that is uh, I see so many small businesses leaving money on the table uh, due to lack of follow up so I, I say to them hey we're not going to focus on how to get new customers until we put a system in place for all the money you're losing right now <laughs> and that it, that's where the gold is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I really starting to see where, where your strategies with the with the uh, customer satisfaction, customer retention, really come into play now. Um, so go ahead. What's num- what's number? F- we're at number five now, right? We are at number five, just in time, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number five is track. If you can't track it, you can't improve it. So often what I find with small and micro business owners, and and this is, uh, you know, artists, uh, online business owners, is that if you don't track your results, you don't know what's working and what's not working marketing-wise, right? You don't know what, what, sometimes something's not working marketing-wise and you might have been doing it for a couple of years, and it's really hard sometimes to kill your darling, right? Um, Oh, yeah. And it's really important to evaluate every year, even every six months, and look at, you know, we we live in a world right now where with um, email and social media, certain things can be tracked. Other things you might have to track through, again, through an Excel spreadsheet or a, a CR customer relationship management database, that kind of thing. But it's very hard if you don't have tracking in place to really evaluate, hey, that blog post you wrote, like what was your, you know, what was the um, traffic on it after it hit and six months later, I have a friend who's an artist down in California. We were like best friends growing up and we still are very close. And she says there's this one blog she has that keeps bringing people to her for astrological readings. And, um, it's, you know, she's had a lot of traffic. So find out which, which blog posts, if you're doing that, for example, are giving you leverage. Maybe you can circulate that content in other ways, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So um, let's see. At this point, because we only got a few seconds left. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what's the best way to to, to uh, for people to get in touch with you if they want want to want to get get them get you to help them with their with their business um, in their success. Well, thank you for asking. So even though I just want to say, even though my process is Lyft, which is L-I-F-F-T, my business only has one F. So like an elevator, Lyft, L-I-F is in Frank, T is in Tommy, and then the word strategies.com. So liftstrategies.com, and also my name is Jen, J-E-N, DeTracy, so D-E-T-R-A-C-E-Y. So you can just Google me, and I will come up, and we can connect that way. And trust me, she Googles very well because one of the things that uh, that that we do um, with my business, uh, Depictions Media, is when we bring somebody on because when we get to the podcast version, we actually have a, a, a custom way of tagging things so that it boosts your social media. So I need to know where you are before I, when I start start this process to where I think maybe you might be. At, at the end of it, at least for uh, it, it usually lasts for, lasts for um, for a few months at least and help boost some sales, right? Yeah, that's so. a great strategy. And you know, one last thing I'd like to say, if I can, and be very quick, is one of the strategies I put in place for myself because of living with fatigue is I work virtually with people, and that saves a lot of time getting up, getting fully dressed, and and transporting myself um, places so that has been my mission to to do all my work virtually and I have succeeded at that it took a while to to get that happening but that's another strategy that I put in place yeah and you know what you you, uh, I know you you do a wonderful job and I look forward to, to working with you maybe a little more on some other projects Let's you see what bet. happens. I'm sure we will <laughs> thank you so much for having okay. me on your show Michael thank you Jim Okay, bye for now. Bye-bye. Well, so that was uh, Jen T. Tracy, and she is an awesome person and an awesome re- resource. So, um, 
Because I, it, she did did describe to me some of, of how her day goes. Uh, as we left her, she's probably going to go have a nap. Uh, she's on um, on the East Coast time in uh, Montreal. So with that, um, we will see you guys next week. And have a great, great weekend. See you next Sunday. Bye.